Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review. My name is Stu Harrison and today we are looking at the Bechstein built W Hoffman V158. It's part of their Vision series. It is a baby grand piano. It's about a five foot three uh, model. Something that we've had on the floor for many years now. Uh, we kind of think of it as a bit of a fan favorite or uh, certainly one of the most popular models in its size and its price range and it occurred to us we had never actually shared our thoughts or a review on this model with you so we wanted to uh, circle back and make sure that we could uh, just deliver some great information to you at home to help with your shopping and expose you to this instrument if it wasn't one that was already on your radar and so we're going to be talking about its touch, its action, um, obviously how Bechstein builds this piano, exactly where they do it. It's, you know, people always have questions uh, about exactly what's done uh, and where and uh, is this a German piano, is it a European piano. So we're going to cover all of that. We're also going to let you listen to the instrument. We've got a great AKG 414 microphone set up. We're going to take that uh, and pump it through a little bit on, on this review as well as a separate listening review. Uh, so you can just hear uh, the piano once its own um, and ultimately just give you a better experience at home to do some shopping before you have to start trekking out and hunting down piano stores. So once again thank you very much for tuning in uh, to the channel, tuning into this review. We are going to get started right away. Let's cover the first thing uh, that often people have a question about because they know uh, the C. Beckstein name or the C. Beckstein brand as a company. It's right at the top echelons of the piano industry. I mean, the Beckstein generally, it's, its nickname is the king of pianos. Uh, in Europe, I know 2018 sales figures put it as the number one producer uh, of premium pianos uh, in the entire European sales region. So, I mean, this is something that they're very dominant in. But a lot of those instruments are well over $100,000. And if you're talking about an upright, could easily be thirty, forty, or fifty thousand dollars. And so, when we look at a grand piano like the Vision series, that is kind of floating in a very similar price range to what you might be looking at a Yamaha C three uh, X or say a uh, you know a Kawai uh, GX three or something like that. Um, immediately, we get questions about: Well, is this really a Bechstein product, or is this just simply a stencil? Uh, meaning that Bechstein has uh, branded it. Bechstein has designed it, um, but it's not actually Bechstein making the piano. Um, so I really wanted to address that uh, first because I think it's the easiest one to address, but it's often one that people uh, sort of hesitate uh, on really investigating the instrument because they're not sure what the answer is. So first of all, this is not only a Bechstein design product, but it is a Bechstein built product. So this, pi pro uh, this piano rather is manufactured in Europe. Uh, this is built in the Czech Republic by Bechstein at Bechstein's factory. Um, and so that whole uh, part of the company is referred to as C. Bechstein Europe. Really, it's just their Czech operation. Uh, about three hour drive down the road, actually, if you look at a map, uh, from their um, German uh, manufacturing headquarters. So very close, highly integrated, the two factories, but this is a European product. Um, that sets it apart from a lot of other instruments in this category where uh, you sort of have um, higher end brands that are paying um, other factories to actually produce pianos for them and then they're able to label it so that they get a nice um, you know vertically integrated uh, brand. Steinway does this with Boston for example. They, um, the Boston has some Steinway design elements but ultimately it is a Kauai built product that they make in Japan and with a few models also in Indonesia. So. Um, is every single component in the piano uh, completely made in Germany or in Czech? The answer would be no. Um, this is very common, uh, first of all, for any piano, uh, except if you're dealing with the very, very, very high end. Uh, even some of the German brands uh, such as Schimmel um, or Blutner that have come up with sort of German certification don't actually certify that the parts are entirely of European uh, origin. And it's getting increasingly rare to find that 
and it's for the simple reason that some of the best manufacturing of steel or the best manufacturing of aluminum parts is actually coming from, you guessed it, China. And so with the Vision Series on the V158, what you've got is a strung back, which is actually made by Hailun. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, the strung back typically refers to uh, the plate and the soundboard uh, sort of, uh, it's almost like a cartridge that kind of fits into the piano. Hailun makes a great strung back. So uh, anyone who's feeling like this maybe is a, a knock against the instrument, do a little more reading. Obviously, you need to you know, make this decision for yourself, feel comfortable about it. But for us, this is something that makes a ton of sense. Hailun is really good at this. There's many companies that are hiring them uh, to do this. Plus, Beckstein already had um, an affiliation with Hailun because Hailun, of course, builds Beckstein's Zimmerman brand. But besides that, every other aspect of this piano is manufactured and assembled in the Czech Republic. So the frame, the action, um, all of the stringing is done in the Czech, all the finishing is done, the polyester, uh, you know, as it says, it's, uh, it is a European manufactured product. So there's the first one uh, taken care of. Next, in terms of components, we've got a piano that's using a uh, Austrian white spruce soundboard. It's a really premium material. Uh, it tends to be a slightly less warm sound than say a Sitka, but um, a bit of a, a better sustain in the mid and upper mid uh, partial region. So you tend to get this almost bell-like tone um, out of white spruce uh, pianos, no different on the V158. And we're dealing with a Beckstein designed action and, uh, sorry, not just designed, built action, as well as a Beckstein hammer. Um, Beckstein is, uh, to my knowledge, um, one of the only companies left who's actually bringing all of those kind of technical action related stuff in-house. Uh, this is something that's being done very deliberately uh, because of course the European piano manufacturing industry has been shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And so every time you have a manufacturer that closes up shop um, and either sells their brand to a Chinese interest or just completely ceases operation, you've got other supplier companies that now have less of a customer base for them to keep going. And so you've seen uh, fewer and fewer of those suppliers, you know, plate makers and action makers uh, that are, are looking robust and looking like they're going to make it through the next 10, 20 years. So Beckstein is looking way down the road. They're seeing the opportunity to bring this stuff back in house. And so uh, like uh, Kawhi, like uh, Yamaha, they're bringing all of that stuff in house, hammer manufacturing, action design, all of those things. Um, and you're getting that right from the Vision series up uh, on the Hoffman. Now, what's the playing experience like? It's got a tonal range that is going to surprise you. Um, it's certainly something that has a ton of uh, very kind of maple-y, uh, uh, Steinway-esque I would almost describe it, um, mid-tones when you're playing in sort of the piano, mezzo-piano range. that you climb up into a forte or a fortissimo, you get these really nice bell tones coming out of like third partial, fourth partial. So uh, just really a nice orchestral palette that you're getting out of this, and that's something that you'll read about a lot in Bechstein's literature, this concept of an orchestral palette. 
So that's happening partially because of the hammer design and how they, uh, they weight it, uh, you know, the material that they build the core out of. It's double felted, of course. Um, this piano is also equipped with duplex scaling, so you're getting a really nice, strong treble. Um, and then down in the bass, um, a, a for me a much clearer bass than what you are going to get out of a similarly priced um, Yamaha or Kawai. It's not that I don't think the, those other instruments have a great bass. They've got a very nice warm bass, but there's a clarity that you're getting on this. single bass notes down in the bottom octave you're not sort of getting all these crazy overtones where isolated it would actually be hard to tell which pitch you were playing which is kind of common in less expensive five foot class pianos unless you're paying some absurd price for like a Fazioli you know F156 or one you know a C Bechstein uh, their uh, what is it the 167 model I mean those are exquisite small pianos but they're well over a hundred grand this is you know a third that price. So in summary, this instrument presents an interesting option to me for a very specific type of buyer out there, which is someone who's set out with probably either a Kawai or a Yamaha in mind, uh, or you know a budget, let's say, um, in and around the $30,000 price range. Uh, they don't want to double that. that you know, they'd love to find something a little bit less, but generally speaking, that's the, the comfort range. And without doing a little bit of digging, that's probably the majority of the suggestions that you're going to be receiving from people, is look at a Kawai built product, look at a Yamaha built product. Those are kind of the, the Honda, the Toyota you know, of your piano world. There might be some slightly less popular options that you can start to uh, look at, say, from a, a SAMIC manufacturer. Uh, but generally speaking, that's kind of the paradigm. So what this presents is another company that's doing full vertically integrated product lines, drawing technologies and designs down for much more expensive things, just like the Shigeru and the Kawai, you know, trickling down into the GX, um, and presents a genuinely different musical option. It's not like this plays the same and it's just a different brand on the front. This has a different tone, it has a different touch than what you're going to get from either a Yamaha CX series or a Kawai uh, GX series. Um, and it gives you the third option. Uh, which is always great uh, to find out that there's another option out there that is just going to give you a, a you know a different palette uh, for you to choose from because you never know when you sit down what you're going to fall in love with. So once again, here is the Beckstein built W Hoffman V158, a fantastic baby grand for you to check out. I hope that you've found the video uh, to be useful, giving you some new things to go and research, Google. Um, be sure to check out just the playing video if all you want to do is hear the instrument played. And of course, we'll see you back for another piano review, I hope, shortly. Good luck and happy shopping. Bye.